Hey, you're back with the Penny Stupid Podcast. I'm Steve Rode. That is Damon Day over there on that other screen. I, I wonder which way you are. I don't I don't know. Right now I am above you in my screen. Oh. Well, in mine, you're below me, so Hey Damon. <laughs> <laughs> There's jokes there. We're not going there. <laughs> well, today we're talking about uh a subject that I, I think is pretty interesting. You and I have, have chatted about this, but it's about uh, door dashing, Instacart, Uber Eats, you know, the whole food delivery. I guess you can include package delivery in this too, about expectations versus reality. Because we had somebody who commented that they were very unhappy with the whole gig thing and multi-apping, people trying to earn more money per hour, because yeah. uh, I'll let you read the comment. Yeah, the comment comes from... Anna P, and she has a, a a valid point that I thought it was it would be you know good discussion mm -hmm. okay for you and I to have because between you and I you know I've been for this Penny Stupid channel I've been doing a lot of the DoorDash and Uber and Uber Eats and Lyft and all this kind of gig type work to see you know how it works and help people figure it out yep and you've been doing other things mm -hmm. but more importantly you buy or you're a customer of DoorDash and Uber Eats, albeit on a very limited basis, but more than me because I've never ordered Uber Eats right. and never ordered DoorDash because the food is too damn high. <laughs> <laughs> well, but go ahead. No, no I, I think it's funny. Uh, I can easily see how somebody placing an order through DoorDash. Did this, did Anna P say which service? Well, so I'm going to read her comment, okay. and, I, and I and I really appreciate the comment because she makes a very valid point. Yeah. But I wanted to respond to it. And I thought it'd be easier to respond yeah, in you know. video with your feedback yeah. as the quote unquote customer in this. Yeah, I'll, I'll be the consumer, <laughs> and you, you're yeah, you'd be the customer. So, so Anna Anna P writes, mm -hmm. I, uh, and this is on a, a video where I'm talking about multi apping and how you can you know increase your income as a driver by doing a DoorDash and stacking it with an Uber Eats and maybe a, a Walmart yeah. order. And, and doubling up or tripling up on those same miles, um, trying to actually make a profit rather than just drive your car into the ground for revenue right. and then you know spend it all on your vehicle. So she says, I don't know about other people, but I have a tendency to tip better when my food isn't cold because, you know, we have the option to add more to the tip after delivery. Mm -hmm. I can't drive, and she has parentheses, too autistic and ADHD. So sometimes DoorDash or Grubhub are my only option when I'm really craving something. When it arrives cold, sometimes I can't eat it because the taste is ruined yeah. and microwaving it messes up the texture. No, I get that. So, so yeah, you might make more money if you don't treat your customers like shit by multi-apping during deliveries in progress. So from a consumer point of view, I... I feel that there is an expectation that your food should arrive like you would like it would if you picked it up at the restaurant or you ate it at the restaurant. It should be warm and tasty and you know re yeah, ready to go. I agree. However, from uh, a consumer that's kind of thought through this a little bit, the reality is that I'm really not paying the driver to do that. I'm paying the driver to bring me my damn thing, whatever it is, whether it's bananas or burritos it, it doesn't matter there's no service that uh, any of the food delivery companies offer that i know of that says uh for an extra x number of dollars we guarantee your food will arrive right out of the oven and hot as it can be right it's just it's a delivery service yeah there's no domino's 30 minutes or it's free right with many of these companies now that that being said you know anna has a very valid point like you don't want to treat you know the customers or the or the, the reason that we even have the gig in the first place right. right so obviously nobody wants cold food and when i'm talking about multi-apping i'm not saying put somebody's burrito in the back of my car and then take a tour of phoenix right. for an hour and then get them the food eventually right. i mean all these apps do have you know tolerances and they, they they're tracking you you can't deviate too long or you'll eventually get deactivated you know so they they have things in place. So I'm talking about multi-apping where, you know, yeah, you might have to deviate a few minutes out of your way, a few miles out of your way. But at the end of the day, I understand 
you know, the, the customers of DoorDash, Uber Eats pay a tremendous amount of money right. for these convenience services. It's a lot of money, which yep. is one of the reasons I don't use those services. It's the, the cost of food is high enough. And then to add delivery and, um, you know, tip and all that on top of that. But what a lot of customers don't realize is the business model, in my opinion, of these apps, uh, Uber Eats, mm -hmm. DoorDash, things like that, is broken. I agree. And I agree. What a lot of customers, they go, oh, I paid a $15 delivery fee. You would assume as a customer that the driver's getting most of that. Right. Right. It's like, I already paid a $15 delivery fee. I paid twenty dollars for my Big Mac plus fit. I'm paying forty dollars to get my Big Mac meal. It's true. And now it's you know I so there's there should be a certain level of expectation. It's like you got to get it here now, and I understand that. But what what because customers have to realize is the driver doesn't work for DoorDash. Right. The driver doesn't work for McDonald's or right. wherever you order the food from. Right. The driver's an independent contractor using their own cars, making their own decisions, paying their own expenses, paying their own gas. Right. Even though you pay a lot of money on the delivery fee, and this is why I say these models are broken, DoorDash is probably paying that driver potentially $2, mm -hmm. maybe $3. And if you live 10 miles away, DoorDash is, and you don't tip, that DoorDash is asking that driver to deliver that food 10 miles for 3 bucks. I don't want to get into all the specifics and expenses and all of that stuff, but there's no way a driver is going to do that. So while you might think multi-apping is causing your food to be cold, also, not getting paid enough money is going to cause your food to be cold because no driver is going to take that order, except for maybe if they're multi-apping, they might grab your order if they're also able to grab another order and go the same direction. Right. So multi-apping actually, in many cases, could get you your food faster if there's not a large tip. Right. Now, I know it's not fair yeah, to say you've right. got to do a large tip on top of that, but as Steve has pointed out in the past, the tip is more of a, what do you call it, Steve? A bribe? A bribe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of alludes to what you, Steve was talking about earlier about different levels of service or expectations. That tip is essentially, hey, I'm throwing a $20 tip on here. I'm sending a signal to that driver that I want my food right now. I don't want you to mess around with it. I want you to jump on my order because you're getting paid $25 to bring me my food. And I will say, if I have a, an order with a big tip on it, mm -hmm. I'm much less likely to mess around grabbing another order trying to make it work yeah. because the economics already work for me with that one order. Well, But if the economics don't work, I will have to grab another one or I won't take your food at all. Uh, it just doesn't make sense for so me. So how long – what do you think the – just in your experience in your area in Phoenix, what do you think the average amount of time is from the time that you pick up the order till you get it to where the person lives? Would you say – is 15 minutes fair? So it's what all over the board. Because I, I know. Where but what, I'm do you, at, what do you think? It, it, it's relative to how far you live. That's the biggest factor. No, but I know. Just give me a number. Like, yeah, like like 15 minutes okay. is, is fair. I mean, if you're only a couple miles from the restaurant, it could be 10. But yesterday I was working and I, I got to a restaurant with, with is doing a DoorDash, just Papa mm -hmm. John's. I got there. They hadn't even pulled the order off the screen yet. Right. So they haven't even started making the pizza, much less put it in the oven. So I marked it as arrived at the store, which I was, mm -hmm. and I asked them. They said, well, yeah, we're just – they were way backed up. So I always – I asked them, well, how long do you think it's going to take realistically because I have another delivery? I might just go and come back, yeah. which I did. And she told me at least 30 minutes. Yeah. There's no way in hell I'm going to sit in Papa John's for 30 minutes. So I marked it as there. I text DoorDash, told them the food hadn't even been started yet. Yep. I text the customer. And and let them know, hey, it's going to be a delay. They haven't even started the order yet. Mm -hmm. And then I went and I did a Walmart shop. So I went into Walmart, which was down the street, and uh, for two customers, got their groceries, came back to Papa John's. Yeah. They were still putting the pizza in the boxes. So perfect timing. Got the pizza nice and hot, put it in my pizza bag, went and delivered the pizza yeah. and the Walmart groceries. So that's an example well, that's, of me multi-apping. That's multi a smart way to do it. Now, my, and my, it didn't hurt the customer at all. Right. But my, my point is, okay, let's say it takes 15 minutes. If I drive my ass to McDonald's and pick up my food, and then it takes me 15 minutes to get home where I open it up and I eat it, it's not the same as, you know, getting your food and eating it at McDonald's or, you know, in the drive through or something like that. It is yeah. not as warm. I don't find the fries are as good. They're cold now. That and not only that, 
you probably, as a just a consumer, probably don't even have a warm bag. Right. I put all my food in hot bags. I've got catering bags for larger orders. I got the DoorDash bag. It's probably better if I bring it to you than if you go get it yourself and then you drive it home. Well, if my expectation is it's going to arrive hot and fresh, that's that's a great expectation to have, but that's just not reality. I mean, what are you going to do? Have a sterno can in the back of your car? You know, <laughs> yeah. there's there's no way if you, especially if you're living like out here, I'll have people twenty miles away mm-hmm. because it, we're, it's so spread out in my area where I'm at, and there's no there's like restaurants in the center. Right. Yeah. And then you shoot out it, and it's just houses. So there's people that live 20 miles from the restaurant, which is why they're ordering DoorDash. Right. Cause they don't want to get their ass in their car and drive 20 miles, get the food and then drive 20 miles back. Right. There's no way that food is going to be anywhere near what it'd be like at the restaurant if you're trying to get somebody to go 20 miles to give it to you. And the other thing is nobody's going to go 20 miles to give it to you <laughs> unless you got a fatty fat tip on that thing. Because that's, again, this is what consumers need to understand. It ain't 20 miles. It's 40 miles. Yeah, out and back. Because there's no other restaurants out there. Well, even if you, you get know? a delivery, like if if I get a ribeye and a potato or something from Texas Roadhouse, I, I don't care how long it takes. When it gets to my house in a styrofoam container, it's just not going to be the same. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's a convenience. So I, it's not good. Yeah, so I see Anna's point, and it's a very valid point. You don't want to, you don't want to take stacks that oh, this one's going to go this way, and this one's going to go this way. Yeah. When I stack orders, and it doesn't even make sense for the driver to take stacks in opposite no, directions. No. What you're trying to do is say, okay, I'm going to get ten dollars for this, and it's going to go down here. Oh, and then I just got this Uber Eats, so I got this DoorDash, I got this Uber Eats that's going to be at this store, pick it up, and it's also going down here. Right. So now two ten dollar orders together, I'm making twenty to go those seven miles or so but those seven miles don't make sense if i'm only making 10 well right? and then that order is going to sit there at the restaurant because no driver is going to go pick it up because you didn't put a big enough tip on it and that goes back to that's why i say the models of doordash and uber eats are broken because it's not fair for the customer to basically say you got to put a fatty tip on this thing just to get your just to get what you would expect which is somebody's going to say oh here's an order i'm going to go get it it's coming out of the oven. I'm driving it to your house. You have to pay all the money for the delivery fee and put a fat tip on there. Yeah, but on that, you tip, don't, on that tip, if you're doing earn by time, are, are you even seeing what the fat tip is? No. Right. So you don't even know. Then the driver can't even be bribed or incentivized to go above and beyond. Yeah. So it's just, it's not fair for consumers. I, because I, I think a tip is something that's earned for, you know, service, service. above and beyond yeah. or is great. And But the way these apps are set up, you can't do that. You can't do a tip. You can't just say, you know, what, I'm going to put my order out. And, and and I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. It's just it is what it is. Right. This is the way these apps work. You Even if you want to do a nice tip on the back end, no dr- driver is going to take that order. Because 95% of the time, there's not going to be a tip on the back end. And DoorDash is paying you $2 or $3, which in most cases won't even cover your actual expenses yeah. to move your car from, you know, to the restaurant, to the consumer's house. So the driver is literally working for tips. So if you don't put a tip on there, they're not going to take it because they're working for free most of the time. That's not fair to the consumer, but that's the way it is. That's the way DoorDash and Uber Eats work. They are 100% dependent on the on the customer subsidizing the driver's income because they don't pay the drivers enough. Now I'm entirely pissed at you, Damon, because... You know, I was trying to think of exa- examples about this whole food delivery thing. And I thought about, you know, last time I, I haven't done DoorDash in a while, but the last time I did it was like Taco Bell. And I remember being entirely disappointed when my, my hard shell tacos got here because they were less crispy. Soggy. Yeah, yeah, they were soggy. So now all I can think about is tacos. So now I'm going to have to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> and it's not even Tuesday. I know. I know. <laughs> well, you know, Anna was making a point about she can increase the tip or add a tip, you know, at the end. And, you know, what I will say, and I'm not perfect. I'm, I make bad choices. I have made some choices where I'm like, oh, I can do that. And then there's a delay at a restaurant or something like that. And I've been like, oh, man, I really screwed this other customer. I got to, you know, step on it and you really get there. Mm-hmm. But I've never had a tip decreased, to my knowledge, from like an Uber Eats or a DoorDash. Yeah. So. Even though I multi-app every chance I get, I try to make smart decisions where 
I can take another order that's not going to negatively affect uh, one or both of the customers. And on the contrary, not only have I not had a tip taken away to my knowledge, I routinely get additional tips added after even many times when I'm multi-apping. So there's ways to do it. There's a, uh, you know, a give and a take, but there's ways to do it where you can still have happy customers and still make it worth your time to do it. In fact, the other day, and I, I actually, it might even be on the video that Anna's responding to. I was doing a stacked order mm-hmm. and that customer, I remember because she, because I always have really good communication. This is key. I'm always in communication with the customer. I, you know, I'm at the restaurant. This is what's going on. It's going to be a little bit later, whatever it is, or, Hey, they added a, a delivery. I got to swing by and then I'll be right to you. Mm-hmm. I always say, in t- and they really appreciate that because most drivers don't. Um, and that's usually what gets me those, those extra tips. But I had a customer that was on a stacked order that was um, on the second one I delivered. I picked up one order, then I picked up her order, then I dropped off the first one I picked up, mm-hmm. and then it was on the way to drop off hers. She already had a fatty tip on it. It was like an $8 tip. It was paying like, I don't know, $18 or something like that to deliver the hamburgers. Yeah. And then when I when once the hour or two hours for Uber Eats cleared, she had increased an additional $10 on the tip wow. after I dropped it off. Damn. So... So, you know, and I was multi-apping. That was the one where I was talking about in the video where I had a Walmart in the car. I had a DoorDash and an Uber Eats. I did all three of those. And my service was good enough to where the customer was like, hey, this is above and beyond. I already put a fat tip, but I'm giving him an extra 10. Oh. So just because you're multi-apping doesn't mean you're treating your customers like shit. As Anna says, her point is taken and very valid. But if you do it right, you can have happy customers and the driver can still make some decent money and cover his expenses. Damon, what did I read this week about Walmart and some change in ID verification? I don't know. Hopefully you read that they're going to start doing it. <laughs> I thought I thought I'm I... getting sick and tired of Walmart not just letting any Tom, Dick and Harry drive their car or and, and deliver groceries. It's, uh, you know, and it, 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 it sucks. But Walmart used to be easy peasy, like shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah. I'd get dings in my office all the time. Hey, would you like 40 bucks to go drop off these groceries real quick? Why, yes. Oh, sure. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> but I used to make easily, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars a week just real part time at Walmart, just cherry picking yeah. 40, 50, 60 dollar orders real quick, and then back in my office in less than an hour. And now it's like, I mean, I might make two hundred dollars a week mm-hmm. doing Walmart here and there. I, you know, some days I don't do any at all. Uh, in fact, a lot of days I don't do any at all. Because there's just so many drivers up there, and um, and I've proven <laughs> as we've done past videos that a lot of them don't have valid driver's licenses, yeah. and the name on the app is not the name of the person. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've been over that. I'm, I'm glad you said. Uh, <laughs> well, well, don't leave me hanging. What what did Walmart say about ID verification? Yeah. <laughs> 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 no uh... ID. What's that? No, I thought I'd I thought I'd read something or saw something that some Walmarts were now uh looking at IDs, but if it has I thought that that's racist. You can't look at IDs. I but if it hasn't hit your Walmart, it must be just a test. I don't know, but it seems like think of whatever would make sense and that's not what Walmart's gonna do. Yeah. Well, what about the, the other apps? sense is out the window. But what's preventing someone from the other apps from? Oh, nothing. There's illegals on all the apps. Yeah. And it's not that they're here illegally. They're trying to make a, a living. But where the issue is, is these apps, oh, our drivers go through background checks and they're this, that, and the other. But there's a lot of people when you're getting your food, you don't know who's delivering that stuff to you because the background checks are a joke. and They're easy to thwart, apparently. Oh. Um, and like when I'm delivering stuff, a lot, not a lot of times, but sometimes customers will ask me to come in to the house and you know bring it to their kitchen yeah. stuff like that you kind of want to know that somebody has vetted that person before you're just allowing them in your house you don't know who they are well, it's like security at the airport that's the illusion of security it's not real security itself well that's what i'm saying like you think oh walmart's vetted this person right no a lot of people think oh well he works for walmart right i i don't work for walmart i never apply for a job there there they did a background check but that that doesn't mean anything there's clearly people that are using different names on the, you know, on the reg. Yeah. And it's like, they background check. No, they're fake accounts, right? What is the... And they're snapping photos of IDs. Yeah. We read in that article the other day that that 
that's a big source of how they get the IDs to make these fake accounts is from actual customers yeah. that, that they have to take a photo of their ID. <laughs> so they're stealing their IDs to make more fake accounts. That's a never ending cycle. What What is the actual name of, as a Walmart spark driver, you're not actually paid by Walmart. It's a different subsidiary or a different company. Yeah, it's, uh, it's spark, but it's, um, delivered something. It's, uh, yeah, Spark is a whole different thing. Yeah. And it's it's deliver something. And the funny thing is that, you know, you're talking about being people thinking you're an employee of Walmart. Not only are drivers not an employee of Walmart, but whatever the other company is, they're also not an employee of that company either. They're all, yeah. they're all but, independent contractors. Yeah. I mean, consumers don't know how any of this stuff works. Right. And, and I wouldn't expect them to because I didn't know how any of it worked before I started this experiment and started doing it either. So. I don't expect consumers to start there and go, okay, I'm going to order this burger on DoorDash. I live 10 miles away. That, okay, that driver's going to have to drive 10 miles. I really, he's probably only going to get two bucks. I need to really increase his tip because how much would I want to make to drive 10 mm-hmm. miles? And c- customers don't think of that stuff, nor should they really have to. That's DoorDash's problem. DoorDash should be the one that figures out how do we have a business where if the customer doesn't put a monster tip, it still works. Because the bottom line is if tipping went away, Yep. I think DoorDash would go away and Uber Eats would go away. <laughs> There's just not enough money. No drivers would take those orders. So anytime you're in a situation where it's like the model won't work unless the customer does a massive tip, I, I don't know how that's going to be sustainable. I honestly don't know how customers keep ordering from DoorDash knowing they have to leave a big ass tip on top of their well, $10 or $15 delivery. Fee. I, I mean, what broke me from using DoorDash or any of the others was – I placed an order. We were doing lunch here at the house, um, and I watched. I I watched the driver pick up the order, and then like drive in the opposite direction. A- and he was multi happy. Yeah, the way. yeah. I I even put a you know big tip on there, encouraging them. You know, bring my food. And it was that point where I just said, "Ah, screw it, man. From now on, I'm just going to go get my own damn food." Yeah. And that's, well, and that's that, that that's a good point. That was probably a bad decision on the driver. But, you know, if you've got an order, say I've got an order where somebody put a fatty tip on it and mm-hmm. it's like it's like it's like DoorDash rich, right? Like twenty five dollars to go five miles. Mm-hmm. That's a fatty DoorDash order, right? That's that's unusual. Well, and then you get that. And now say you have a five dollar order pop up on Uber Eats. And even if it looks great, oh, it's it's right on the way. And then the delivery's on the way, too. I can grab an extra five dollars. Well. The problem is Murphy has a law yeah. and Murphy has a law for a reason. And if something's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong. And it's always going to go wrong with the five damn dollar order that you take. Yeah. That's not going to make you much money. And so what you don't want to do is have a nice order with a nice tip and go put that, you know, if it's a $25 order, you it's probably at least a $20 tip. because mm-hmm. Dorda, So you're risking that $20 to deviate to make five. That the the juice is not worth the squeeze. Now, right. if that other order is like another twenty dollar order, then you're like, I got to gamble with this one. I got to roll the dice. But I've learned from this from experience that you never want to gamble with these little tiny orders. If somebody like what you did, Steve, said, "Hey, here's a fatty tip. I would like to get my food right now. I'm paying this much money. I'm probably going to be paying attention mm-hmm. yeah. to what's going on." You don't want to, you know, f around and find out to try to make an extra five bucks and then you end up losing 20. Well, and especially really going to be hating yourself, especially when the app is going like, Hey, your food's on the way. And it's going the wrong way. And you You're can like, see hey, it. Hey, <laughs> no, it ain't. It ain't on the way. <laughs> yeah. That's always, that's always the bane of my existence is I know the customer can see where my car's going. Yeah. Right. And it's like, hopefully they're not paying attention <laughs> and you can, you can get away with that a lot more with like a Walmart spark. Cause people aren't, People aren't staring at their phone for their groceries most of the time. Once right. in a while, they might. But and you have bigger tolerances. So when you when you stack orders, it's easier to stack a Walmart and an Insta with like if you have Walmart and Instacart, it's easier to grab a DoorDash with a Walmart or a DoorDash with an Instacart. Where we start getting an Uber Eats and a DoorDash, and they're you know both those people are tend to be watching the app because mm-hmm. it's the hot food and they're hungry and they want right. to get it. Uh, so you got to be a, a little extra careful when you're starting to stack multiple hot food orders. But there is a way to do it if you're selective. And you're smart and you know your area and you know how long things are going to take so you don't accidentally make somebody wait 20 extra minutes 
because you're trying to make an extra five bucks. It's it's not worth it. Well, the downside of being able to track your driver is I was in Washington, D.C., uh, placed a, an order from a – we needed something from the drugstore. And uh, I the driver went above and beyond and had them look in the back and see if they had whatever it was um, and got it and was in touch with me the whole time. And he was on a moped. And I was following him uh, coming to the hotel, and he made it as far as an intersection and then just stopped and didn't move. <laughs> and then I got a message – your order that sound has good. been canceled. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully the driver wasn't canceled. Ooh, I know. Hit a bush. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Damon. Anything else you want to talk about? No, other than I, Anna, I really appreciate the comment. Yeah. It is a valid point. Um, but, you know, if I think if you order food and the driver takes way too long to get it to you because you can see him driving all over. You, that's a valid reason for reducing the tip that you put on there, but multi-apping is not the 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 main problem. The main problem is the driver needs to have a way to make it profitable to get the order to you. And Uber and DoorDash really put that onus on the driver because they're not they want to give you two dollars and then yell at you when you're not doing exactly what they want. And my attitude to that is. Yeah. Uber. <laughs> not the customer. The well, customers are what makes all this go. It's not about the drivers versus the customer. It's Uber and DoorDash. They're the ones pulling those strings. Um, but the customer is the reason that the driver even has a gig to go to. So well, there's it's always, not about the customer. There's always plan B. Um, you know, we mentioned talked about previously, which is uh what's the cheapest Uber? Is it Uber X? Is that what it is? X. X. Um, you know, there's nothing that prevents someone from. No, technically, share now is cheaper. You can get a stranger in there. Oh, well, uh, there's nothing that prevents somebody from calling an Uber X to take them to McDonald's and drop them off so they can get their hot meal. That is true. And and as I told you last night, I've had that happen before. And this what was it six months ago, Steve? And I I was just doing some Uber X, which I don't usually do, but I was experimenting with it. And this was maybe it was more like a year ago. I remember going picking up this gentleman, and the destination was Whataburger. Mm-hmm. It's like two miles down the road. I'm, okay. And he goes, oh, I'm just going to – I already ordered my food. It should be ready. I'm going to grab it. I'll be right back. This is interesting. So I'm like, okay. He goes and gets his food, comes back out. Now we're back to his apartment. <laughs> and as we're driving back, I'm like, you know, you could – you know, because this is Uber. Yeah. And I was like, you know, Uber has – Uber Eats where – Someone like me would just get the food for you and bring it to you. You don't yeah. have to go for a ride to go get it. And he goes, well, I know, but I had a $10 coupon for Uber X. So the only way to cash the coupon in was if I went with you. Smart guy. I, I went, <laughs> all right, yeah. 10 points for him. So, yeah, if you don't want, you know, your food to be, if you do it, if you go with the driver, that's a pretty surefire way to make sure he doesn't go on another order until he gets you home. Unless he's throwing, he's like, "Excuse me, I got an errand. Yeah. I got to go get this other. Can you hold pizza. this bag for me?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just get an Uber and have him take you to the restaurant. <laughs> and if you want, have the the Uber can just drop you off. You can eat it at the restaurant, right? Right. When it's hot, and then just get another Uber to take you home. Right. Exactly. My point. Exactly. I mean, if you got plenty of money to burn to order DoorDash, you got money to just get Uber <laughs> yourself to the restaurant. Eat it there. All right, Damon, until next time, see ya. Peace. <laughs>